In this video, we will talk about recurrence relations, which is just a special kind of sequence. So a recurrence relation essentially expresses whatever the next term of our sequence, a sub n, will be in terms of one or more of the previous terms. Um, so that's why it's called recursive, because we have to take terms that we had before and use them. And it's really important in a recurrence relation that you will be given initial conditions, such as, in this case, I would be given the initial condition that the first term is 2, and uh, or a sub 0 is 2, a sub 1 is 5. So this gives us a starting point. And the reason I needed two initial conditions here is notice what my function says. My function says I'm going to take to find my new value, I'm going to take the value I had before that, and I'm going to add two of the values that I had before that. So I know that a sub 0 is 2, a sub 1 is 5. So if I want to then find a sub 2, this is going to be a sub 1 plus 2 times a sub 0 which means, oops, a sub 1 is 5, and 2 times a sub 0, which is 2, that gives me 5 plus 4, which is 9. If I then want to find the next term, that is going to be a sub 2 plus 2 times a sub 1. And then I'm just going to plug in those values. So a sub 2 I just found was 9. 2 times a sub 1 is 2 times 5, so that's 9 plus 10, or 19. And I would continue that process. So recurrence relations are great because that helps us to find the next value, but it's also very time consuming because if I asked you to find a of 100, we would probably be here a while. Let's take a look at a couple of practice questions. And it says, let a sub n be the sequence that satisfies the recurrence relation. And it tells me to find my value, I'm going to take the value before and add 6. So this one's pretty straightforward, right? If I'm going to find a sub 1, that says take a sub 0 and add 6 to it. And a sub 0 was 3, so 3 plus 6 equals 9. If I wanted to find a sub 2, that's a sub 1 plus 6. a sub 1 was 9. 9 plus 6 is 15. If I want to find a sub 3, that's a sub 2 plus 6. And that's just 15 plus 6, which is 21. So those are my next three values that I, were asked to that I was asked to find. And as we can see, this is simply an arithmetic sequence with a common difference of six is essentially what's happening here. Uh, let's take a look at if a sub zero was negative seven. So again, same recurrence relation. Now I'm saying a sub one would be a sub zero plus six, which is negative seven plus six. And that gives me negative one. A sub two is a sub one plus six which is negative 1 plus 6, which is 5. And a sub 3, or the third term of the sequence, would be the second term plus 6, which is 5 plus 6, or 11. So we can see here the common difference was 6, and here the common difference was 6, and the only difference between the two is whatever the starting point was, 3 or negative 7. Obviously, one of the most famous or recognizable recurrence relations is the Fibonacci sequence. And the Fibonacci sequence, um, I've written there in yellow. And essentially, what we know about it is to find the next term, we just take the two terms before it. And what I'm asking you to do is to write that as a recurrence relation. So my question is, what is f sub 0? or we think of that as a sub 0. So what is like the very, very first term? Hopefully, we all know that that would be 0, because this is the first term. So this is like, what's my starting point over here? And my starting point over here would be 0. 
f sub 1, that's this term right here, so that's given to me as 1. So how do I find each of these subsequent terms? So let me use a different color. From here to here, how am I going to continue to find those values? So I'm going to say f of n is taking f of n minus 1, so the term before it. So 1 is found by adding 1 and also 0, which is two terms before it. Same thing here, 2 would be one term before it plus the other term before it, 3 would be 2 plus 1, 5 would be 3 plus 2, 8 would be 5 plus 3, you get the idea. So this is how we would express that and obviously for n's that are greater than or equal to 2 and obviously n also has to be an integer because we're not going to plug in a 2 or, or I'm sorry, a 2.5 or a 3.7, only integers. Now, as I said before, recurrence relations are great, but they're not so great if I ask you to do something like find a 100, because that means I would have to find all of the values up to that point. So if possible, we would like to solve the recurrence relation into a closed formula. And a closed formula just tells us, hey, instead of taking this term before plus this term before times two or whatever, we, we want to write it so that we can take that 100 and plug it in somewhere and find the solution. So we're just basically trying to write a function for n. As you can imagine, there are different strategies to go about solving a recurrence relation. Um, I just want to show you two, actually one, but two of the same um, method, which is iteration. And that essentially asks us to, again, write what the function would be. And in this method, as you can see, I'm given a sub one equals two, and then I'm given the recurrence relation that says take the term before and add three. And what I'm doing is I'm essentially looking for a pattern. So here I had two and then two plus three because that's what it told me to do for a sub two is to take the term before it plus three. And then a sub three is the term before it, which is two plus three. And then I have to add three. And notice I've simplified this because I have plus three and I have plus three. I've simplified it to plus two times three because there were two threes. And then I'm going to take this, which is a sub 3, and I'm going to add 3. And notice I can rewrite that as 2 plus 3 times 3, because there were 1, 2, 3, 3's. And so I'm starting to sense a pattern of what's going on here. And the next thing I'm going to look at before I write my final formula is notice that this number is 4, but this number is 3. This number, the index, is 3, but I'm multiplying by 2. So it seems to me that I could write this, my final solution, as 2 plus, and then again, I'm taking it times 3, but I'm not taking it times n, I'm taking it times n minus 1. So this 3 is here. And then this value, 2, 3, the next one would be 4, etc., is 1 less than the value uh, in the index. So this would be my solution. And again, that's using iteration. And this one is like working upwards. So I'm starting from the bottom and working my way up. So this method is also iteration, but this is going in the opposite direction. So I'm starting from the top and working my way down. This is not the way I really like to do it. I actually prefer the other direction, but let's take a look at this other example. So notice here, I've started with my recurrence relation rather than starting with my initial value or initial condition. So I'm starting here and saying, okay, what if I replaced a sub n minus one with this function again. So I'm saying, what is this term? Well, it's one term before n minus one, which is a sub n minus two plus three, because that's what it tells me. 
And again, notice I'm starting to see a pattern here. So what does this really tell me? Well, it tells me that I'm going to be multiplying. If this is n minus 2, I've got a 2 here. If this is n minus 3, I've got a 3 here. So if I continue this pattern, say all the way down to a sub 2, then I'm going to have 3 times what? Times n minus 2. Again, note how those two are related, n minus 3 and 3, n minus 2 and 2. Well, can I continue? Of course I can, because a sub 2 is found by taking a sub 1 plus 3. And I'm just going to rewrite this. And this gives me a sub 1, which of course is 2. So 2 plus 3 plus 3 times n minus 2. And if I simplify that, because I've got this plus 3 again, then I can say that this is 2 plus 3 times n minus 1. And that would be my final solution for a closed form equation. Or I guess more specifically, a sub n equals. So that is my closed form equation. Same equation I found in the other direction. Again, I like the other method a little better.